Hello and welcome to Centurus Power BI Visualizations Intermediate. My name is Patrick Powers, trainer, data architect, and developer here at Centurus. This module is on linking and grouping visualizations. In this video, we will create a dashboard with linked visualizations. Dashboards are single-page multi-visualization reports that tell a story. True dashboarding is only available as part of the Power BI service. In desktop, we can emulate a dashboard by placing multiple objects on a single report page and linking them together. A typical example of this is using a slicer. Selecting anything in the slicer impacts any linked objects on the page. Objects can be made linked or independent as needed by the requirements of the report. Up to this point, we have created report pages that have consisted primarily of a single visualization. In practice, most of our users will want to see multiple visualizations on the same page and have them linked together. While this may be thought of as a dashboard, True dashboards are only part of the BI service and must be published. We will create a dashboard style report that emulates similar behavior. So I've got a blank page going on here and we're going to add a clustered bar to it, but we're not going to resize it for now because we're going to add multiple objects. From dim customer, I'll add country to the chart. From fact internet sales, sales amount. We'll now add four summary visualizations across the top of our report page. Move the bar chart down to expose the top part of the canvas, and with nothing selected, click on the card visualization. Repeat this three more times, and arrange them at the top of the canvas. Now we may need to rearrange these further after we get some data items in, but here we've got our four spanning the top. From Fact Internet Sales, we'll take Sales Amount and drop it in the first card, Profit into the second card, Order Quantity into the third, and Total Product Cost into the fourth. Let's see if these are linked. In the bar chart, click on United States. Notice how all four update to reflect that we've selected a single mark. If we change any of these marks, we see them change. While we're at it, let's click on our bar chart, let's go to the formatting pane, and change the tooltip to a type of default. With nothing selected on the canvas, add a pie chart. Let's resize this. With everything laid out nicely, let's work on our pie chart. From dim product, we'll add product line, make sure it's in the legend drop zone, and from fact internet sales, add sales amount to the values drop zone. Just like with our other, we can change the tooltip so that it reflects the standard tooltip. We want the pie to remain independent and not change or be changed by any of the other objects. With the pie selected, go up to the format ribbon. Here we'll click on edit interactions. We may need to bring our pie down a bit to be able to see the interactions for everything. And note what we've got here are controls that allow us to show which of the other objects are impacted by the pie chart. So for each of these, we'll click the little no button. And now when we click on the pie, it doesn't change any of our other ones. However, our pie is still affected by these. So we need to click now on the bar chart and turn this off. Once we've got everything set up, we can click back on format and turn off the edit interactions and then resize our objects one last time before sharing it with our end users. We can now test this and we see that the pie chart is remaining independent the bar is controlling each of our four summaries. That concludes this module where we saw how to link objects into a dashboard style report. In our final installment, we will look at working with the data view. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe and check back for the next entry in the series. Thank you for watching.